here, but you're going. This is the Game Boy Camera, a device that turns any Game Boy into a camera. Released in 1998, it was the smallest digital camera on the market. It works just like any other game for the Game Boy, it just slots into the back and just like that, you turn your handheld gaming console into a fully fledged point and shoot camera. It was brilliant as the Game Boy's large screen was used as a viewfinder. Here it is in a stock Game Boy Color. I'll be using a Game Boy Pocket that's been modified with a modern backlit LCD screen because that's a lot easier to film. This is the sensor in this beast of a camera. It's a 14 megapixel quarter inch CMOS sensor. Wait, that says kilopixel? So 0.014 megapixel? Yep, it captures 128 by 128 pixel images, which are cropped and stored as 128 by 112 pixel images. And the Game Boy camera could store up to 30 of these images. The only way to get images off the cartridge was to use this amazing accessory. The Game Boy Printer, an ultra portable thermal printer that produced postage stamp size prints right there in your hand. And it was powered by batteries. Like, just listen to the sound it makes. So cool. So why, when we have modern technology, would you use this camera in the year 2022? Well, it's the challenge of taking as good a picture as possible with the limitations this camera has that makes it really interesting. Like how much can you convey and communicate and express with just 0.014 megapixels and black, white, and two shades of gray? Under the best possible circumstances, how good a picture can you take? That's what we're gonna find out today. Okay, I have a couple of goals. I wanna take a picture of the moon and I want it to fill the whole frame. And I also wanna take some really cool macro photography. So both of those require me to fit different lenses because this is a wide angle. Taking a picture of the moon with this would fill one pixel probably. So I'm gonna design a 3D printable quick swappable lens system that allows me to use different kinds of lenses like Canon, Pentax, and Nikon, and whatever. So this is my personal unit. I bought this one in 1999 when I turned 12 years old and I used all my birthday money to buy it. I recently found it in a box and I started playing with it and it's just so unique looking. It's so charming, it's so raw. You can instantly tell if an image is from the Game Boy camera. Like there's nothing even close to resembling it. It's very easy to take bad pictures with this. And it swivels around so you can take selfies. Whoop. The color depth on this marvelous camera is a whopping two bits. A bit can be either a one or a zero. So the combinations are zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. Meaning that the Game Boy camera can produce black, white, and two shades of gray. And that's it. For comparison, a modern camera can operate in 10-bit color space and produce over a billion shades of color. Now this is gonna be a real challenge as the only settings you're allowed to make in camera is to change the brightness and contrast. And both of those are applied on top of the auto exposure, which you can't turn off. So there's no way of locking the exposure or anything similar, like making things even more difficult or challenging, which is a part of the appeal for this challenge. Both of these require me to fit different lenses to the Game Boy camera. Since the moon is waning, I'll start with the mount for this lens. Shinon 300mm focal length f 5.6 aperture vintage lens I got real cheap from an online thrift store. For what I paid for it, this is crazy good glass. So why did I choose a 300 millimeter lens? Well, I want as much of the frame as possible to be filled with the moon, but I don't want it to be cropped. If you've done any DSLR photography, you know a 300 millimeter lens is a lot of zoom, but it's not fill the whole frame with the moon zoom. So why would it work on the Game Boy camera? Well, it comes down to sensor size. This is the size of a full frame, also known as a 35 millimeter sensor. Now, this is the size of a Game Boy camera sensor. As you can see, it's pretty tiny compared to a full frame. It's about 1 11th the area. Here's a quick demonstration. This is a normal lens. This is a 35 millimeter frame. Inside of here is the Game Boy camera sensor. 
only the thing that's inside of the small area here is what the Game Boy camera is actually seeing. So the smaller the sensor, the more zoom a lens perceives to have. Meaning that if you have a 35 millimeter sensor and you want the same amount of zoom, then you would need a lens with 10.81 times as long focal length. So a 300 millimeter lens would be a 3,200 millimeter lens. Now time for some math. The moon is about 3,475 kilometers in diameter. The distance between the Earth and the moon varies between 356,600 and 406,600 kilometers. Currently at the recording of this video, it's 368,000 kilometers. If you stand on the surface of the Earth and look straight up, you can imagine that you can see 180 degrees of the night sky. Now we want to calculate how much of that sky is taken up by the moon. And to do that, we uh, can use the small angle approximation formula. Now, depending on how far away the moon is, that would vary between 0.49 degrees and 0.56 degrees. Currently, since the moon is 368,000 kilometers from the Earth, that would give us 0.54 degrees. Now, I, I know this might be complicated, but it, you'll understand here in a, in a second. The field of view of a camera is dependent on the focal length and the size of the sensor. Now, the smallest distance on the Game Boy camera sensor is 3.15 millimeters. And the focal length for this lens is 300 millimeters. So the field of view in this case is 2 arctan times 3.15 divided by 2 times 300. And that comes out to 0 0.60 degrees. And as we know from before, the moon is currently taking up 0 0.54 degrees. So in total, that would mean that 90% of the height of the sensor is taken up by the moon, which I think is pretty perfect because if we had 100%, it would be very difficult to frame. All right, so let's design the mount for this lens. First, we need to take the camera apart though. In 1998, there wasn't much in the way of solid state memory to store data like we have today. So the Game Boy used the thing available at a time, which was a volatile memory to store the pictures. As soon as it's disconnected from power, all the data on the ship is lost. Amazingly, this little battery is still going strong after 24 years after being fitted. However, I don't think it's going to last much longer, so I'm just going to replace it with a fresh one. I'm also going to replace the electrolytic capacitor with a tantalum one as the liquid electrolyte in the capacitor dries up over time and ruins the capacitance. Tantalum caps don't suffer from this problem though. Now note that electrolytic caps have the negative terminal marked, as you can see here, whereas a tantalum cap have the positive terminal marked. If you don't pay attention to this, you're gonna have a bad time. Okay, that's done. Hopefully the camera will last another 25 years before needing maintenance again. Okay, so let's design a 3D printable mount that holds the sensor and make a quick swap system for the lenses. The first part we're going to do is this one here, which holds the swivel ball for the sensor in the normal Game Boy camera. We're going to use this part for mounting everything on. So this needs to be very exact and very strong. So what I did was I put this in a flatbed scanner and brought it into Fusion 360. In here, I just traced it and extruded this part. And after a couple of revisions, this fit really nice in the halves. Next, I designed this holder for the sensor. So I needed this to be a separate part because the sensor is going to be mounted on the back of this. And this is going to slot into the mount that's inside of the cartridge. When you have something that's square and you 3D print that, the corners are always going to be rounded over because what you're extruding is round. So to get around that, you can add this little circle in the corners. This makes the 3D print go in a little arc when it gets to the corners. That way you can slot in anything that has very sharp corners into your 3D print very easily. So the sensor gets screwed into place using the original hardware. And that's one of the criteria I have for this design. I want all the parts to be 3D printable and I just want to use the original screws and you don't need any external hardware. So on the front of this lens, I added a thread. This is an M33 by two thread. So this is where the different lens holders are going to be screwed into place. And this way I can even mount very small lenses, so big lenses or anything in between. And it makes it really quick to change. Also having a lot of threads like this 
really stops any light leak because there's so much engagement in the thread that there's so much surface area that no light is gonna get through that. Okay, some quick tips on how to succeed with 3D printable threads is to have the male part end before it hits the bottom of the female part, making it so that there's no gap here. If this part goes all the way to the bottom, the bottom can hit before this surface here mates up. And it's also a really good idea to have the threads not start at the top here because that can interfere as well. So always start the threads like a couple of millimeters down. Next, threads made in 3D softwares have very tight tolerances and that's not gonna be printable on a 3D printer. So what you wanna do is add some extra tolerance. And what I found was using the push-pull command, you can push-pull each of these three surfaces. We wanna push-pull all of these surfaces. So I'm gonna do Q, minus 0 0.05, if you have a normally tuned 3D printer, start with 0.1 millimeter because 0.05 is pretty tight. So you have to have a really well tuned print over that. I usually only do this on one of the parts. And I, in this case, I did it on the female part because I'm going to print more of the male parts than the female parts. So if I do the change on the female part, I don't have to do that change on all the extra mounts later. Just know that whenever you do a design like this, you're not going to nail it on the first try. So make some prints while designing of the critical things that you want to test out. So usually I end up doing maybe three of each part in the end to get tolerances really tight and get fits like perfect. Next we need to talk about flange distance. A lens is designed to focus at a specific point behind the mount. On a Canon system, for instance, it's 44 millimeters behind the lens, and Nikon uses 46.5. The Pentax K mount is 45.46 millimeters, which is I'm not going to be able to hit that perfectly with this many pieces involved. So I did the next best thing, which is make it adjustable. So now I can very easily set the distance perfectly and then I can just add a dab of glue to lock it perfectly in place. This way I can adjust it while the camera is running to get that perfect focus point. I also printed this little lens tripod adapter. Uh, I want as little stress on the Game Boy camera cartridge as possible and the Game Boy is a lot lighter than the lens. So this way, we don't have a lot of weight hanging on the cartridge itself. And the center of gravity of the whole system is very close to the mount. So there's no torque force applied on any part, which is nice. This is the Bad Boy camera, 1998-3000 trademark. With this modular 3D printed mount design, you can use almost any type of lens. Featuring a 0.014 megapixel sensor. This 2-bit system really shines when it comes to kind of taking pictures. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, anywho, uh, let's see how much zoom this thing has. Uh, this is a Lego figurine that stands 43 millimeters tall. Uh, let's put that at the other end of my house. Okay, so let's see how far away that is with the laser. That's 13 meters away. I think that should be enough to photograph the moon with. So at 10 p.m. I started heading out to the field. There was uh, snow out, lovely 30 centimeters deep. 10 minutes of walking later and I'm out of the field. Yeah, you can't see much, can you? Oh, it's cold. So it turns out I'm an idiot because uh, the moon hasn't risen yet because I was looking at the sky and I'm like, Where the, where's the big round thing that's supposed to be here? And uh, yeah, I'll just have to walk the 15 minutes back to uh, my home and uh, stay in the warm for a little bit. When it's this dark, the FPS on the Game Boy camera goes down to like one or <laughs> half a frame per second. Uh, this makes aiming and focusing quite a challenge. It's probably going to take like 20 minutes to, f to actually frame this. Is, is that the moon? Oh, I think I already got it. Can I get it in focus now? Oh, oh no, Gio! Oh, so cool. Oh, you can see the cloud pass. 
it looks like my math was correct uh, as the moon was filling up almost the whole frame. It's pretty crazy how quickly the moon moves in the frame at this level of zoom. While the camera is setting the auto exposure, the moon has had time to move enough to where I need to reframe it sometimes. Just look at this slightly sped up footage. Like you can see it moving over the frame. It's pretty crazy. Just breathing on the tripod though makes the whole thing shake. Luckily, since the FPS was so low, you could hit the A button to take the picture really quickly and it would save the frame that was currently being displayed, uh, which was drawn like a tenth of a second earlier. And man, just look at these pictures I managed to capture. Like this made the whole project worth it. Like all the design time I put into this, this one is probably my favorite. Just look how good that looks. And it's a picture of an object 368,000 kilometers away taken with a toy camera from 1998. Next, I decided to print a Canon mount for the camera. This way I can take some really sweet macro shots. And I'll be using this really nice Canon 100mm f2.8 macro lens. I made a tripod mount for this as well as trying to take handheld macro with an 1100mm uh, equivalent focal length is uh, tricky to say the least. I then scavenged the house for some dead insects and found a bunch of cool stuff. Ooh, perhaps I should clean more often? Nah. Okay, so we're gonna take some macro photos. is my spirit animal. It's a murder hornet and they eat wasps. Wasps are mean jerks. Now these are the best pictures I've taken of the murder hornet. It just looks so mean. It's like, mm, I mean business. I'm gonna kill those wasps. Now here's some other cool shots. This is a wing of a dragonfly. This is the face of a dragonfly. This is the face of a butterfly. I mean, it just looks like, mm, come at me, bro. So uh, you wanna get stung today? Mm? You wanna get, mm? Here's some completely unrelated shots. This is my wife's eyeball. I know I said earlier that there was no way of getting images off the Game Boy camera, but luckily we live in the future now and there are solutions. They come in two categories. The first one pretending to be a Game Boy printer and the second one reading the data straight from the cartridge. Now the first one is cheap and easy to DIY. The second one is expensive but very easy to use. It just shows up as a removable drive on the computer and you just drag the images in. Seeing as I'm both cheap and I don't want to wait weeks for delivery, I went with the DIY solution. I even have the whooping two components I need at home. And those components are an Arduino and a Game Boy Link cable. If you have a knockoff cable or one that you don't care about, you can just cut out the middle and then solder it straight to the Arduino. Uh, this is an original cable though and I don't want to dedicate it to this project alone. So I'm going to make a custom PCB that will double as a connector. And I'm going to make this using a freaking laser. And this is the laser. I'm using a 50 watt Rakus fiber laser fitted with a 110 by 110 millimeter lens. It works in the 1000 nanometer wavelength, uh, which makes it excellent for cutting metals. The focus spot size on these machines are so incredibly small that even with 50 watts you can cut pretty thick metals. It also makes it possible to make very tiny markings and engravings. But the best thing about this kind of machine is that it's super fast, like this can move seven meters per second and it can do that by using a mirror that it angles instead of a gantry on a co2 laser for instance the only downside to this is the working area like this can do 110 millimeters by 110 millimeters and that's it but well, i mean it compensates by making this freaking amazing sound The reason why there's two of them is because I only had 0.8mm copper plated FR10 board at home, so 
So I cut a top and a bottom board and I'll stack them together to get 1.6 millimeter thickness. And that's the thickness that the Game Boy cable connector needs. Now, bare copper tends to make really bad connectors as copper oxidizes quickly and the surface becomes non-conductive. So to extend the life of this connector, I'm gonna tin it using some solder. All that's needed is a super thin layer of solder though. So I used this fluxing gel form and that turned out to work really well. And then I just removed any excess using a solder wick. I had this uh, old Arduino laying around that doesn't have any USB interface that I decided to dedicate to this project. I'll be uh, using an FTDI adapter on here as well, but if you have an Arduino with built-in USB, you won't need this additional hardware. I then glued the boards together using some CA glue and used the pins to align the boards. And I 3D printed the connector so I don't accidentally plug in the cable upside down and a case for the whole thing while I'm at it to make it look a little bit snazzier. All design files are of course available on our website, hackmakemod.com. All right, let's turn this Arduino into a Game Boy printer emulator. First, download the Game Boy printer emulator project by Brian Koo from GitHub. Open the Arduino sketch, then connect your Arduino. Choose the COM port and the programmer and make sure that you have the right board set. And then you can just upload this code. Compiling sketch. As soon as it's done, you can open the serial monitor. And here you have to change the baud rate to 115200. Now that's actually all you have to do on the programming side. It's ready to use. Next, we can just connect the printer to the Game Boy. Now you just have to print from the Game Boy camera. The Arduino is going to start spitting out a pair of hex numbers for each pixel. When it's done printing, all you have to do is mark all this, copy it. Next, you just need to go to this website that's linked in the GitHub. Here, you can just paste the code that you just had and then hit update and boom, a pixel perfect image from a Game Boy camera. I personally prefer the Game Boy Pocket look, perhaps because that's what the handheld I grew up with, but the original Game Boy looks pretty sick too. And then you can just hit download PNG. Oh, before I forget, there are some tips on how to make the transfer process a little less painful. You don't have to print each picture separately. You can batch print by pushing select on the main menu, then choose link, then print and then options and then quick select all the images you want to print and then hit print and then we'll print all those images in a sequence as you can see this process takes a while so grab a cookie and relax a little bit the website that converts the hex digits into images understands that these are multiple pictures in a stream so you can just copy paste the whole block and it will automatically separate images that you can download now, deleting pictures individually can be very uh, time consuming. So I found the quickest way to get all the pictures uh, off the cartridge is to wipe the whole cartridge. So hold the start and select buttons during boot up and it will ask you if you want to delete everything. This is by far the fastest way to start taking pictures again after you've downloaded all the pictures. But it will also delete any game process or songs that you made in the DJ studio. Oh yeah, I haven't talked about that. There's some mini games that you can play and you can also make some really dope music in the DJ studio. Just listen. So was this project worth it? 100%. I would redo this project in a heartbeat if I had to. Because the images that you can take are so interesting. And the challenge of taking really good photos on this system is very unique because like you walk out and you look for things with the perfect contrast and size and depth to them that you can take with this camera to get good pictures and that it's going to look good in low resolution it's just for what they are i have to say i'm blown away by this 0.014 megapixel camera from 1998 good job Game Boy. Also, if you've taken any pictures with the Game Boy camera, please post them in the comments because I really love to see them. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this project, please share with someone because that helps us out a lot. And also subscribe while you're at it because that also helps us out. So we can make more videos like this in the future. 
Thank you very much. I'm David, and you've been watching Hack Make Mod. See you next time.